هو طبعا موضوع الانفكشن في الديابيتيك فيت از فيري كريتيكال ودايما في ديبيت وده لسه نوت يعني نوت سوليوتد ان نوت سولفد في في, في الليتريتشر برايمري انتي بايوتيك ثيرابي فيرسز سيرجيكال ديبرايدمنت في نقطه بس قبل ما ابدا تكمله لمحاضره الدكتوره ولاء وتعقيب عليها ويرد ده بوقت مستقطع ان الانتي بايوتيك ثيرابي افكتيف لازم يبقى كلتشر سنسيتيفيتي جايدد زي ما هي قالت طبعا واللي حطينا في دايليما تاني الهاي ريزيستنس زي ما الدكتور محمد مختار قال والفكره الثالثه انا هدي انتي بايوتيك اكوردنج تو وات از ات سوفت تيشو انفكشن ويتش نيد شورت ديوريشن 2 تو 3 ويكس ولا انكلودنج بون انفكشن ويتش از ويتش نيد اباوت مينيمم 6 مانث 6 ويكس انتي بايوتيك يعني شهر ونص مضاد حيوي شهر ونص مضاد حيوي في عيان ديابيتيك عنده رينال امبيرمنت عايز دوز ادجستمنت سؤال هل ينفع ولا لا؟ عيان محتاج شهر ونص ده في في اورجانيزم بتكون ريزيستنس كل شويه وبولي مايكروبيا برضه سؤال تاني من هنا هنيجي للرول بتاعنا احنا ال aim of this lecture to understand the forms of infection in diabetic food know how to set diagnosis of infection which in my eye is very difficult understand the role of orthopedic surgery in management of bone and soft tissue infection and the post operative care common scenario diabetic patient with such ulcer chronic sometimes acute receive antibiotic for a long time without improvement of such ulcer is it has dressing wound care or not both scenarios are present using orthotics or not and he was told that you have to accept your foot or amputation is mandatory of course ulcer with such bad odor with this discharge is not only medical problem it is also a social problem The first question I have to ask myself, is it really infection? The, the setting up the diagnosis of infection depends mainly on clinical signs of infection supported by laboratory tests, microbiological examination, and radiological evaluation. Clinically, the signs of inflammation, redness, hotness, and swelling. In case of infection, with immune compromised patient, not all of there. The size of ulcer, more than two centimeter square, the, has the sensitivity of about 55% that there is infection, but it is not a, uh, with its specificity uh, 92%. The deeper the ulcer, the more likely underlying bone infection, especially if there is more than three millimeter in depth. The bone to probe test, I am putting this trial probe, and under this is trial, 100 line. It is this trial. It should be a trial. Otherwise, I will introduce infection. This trial probe, it is debatable whether I reach the bone, yes or not, and if there is underlying infection. This was investigated by a number of, lit of uh, articles uh, with variable sensitivity from very low, 38, to uh, very high, uh, 97%. It is difficult to set a clear laboratory diagnosis, but raising of the ESR, especially if higher than 70 millimeter uh, first hour, it, uh, it is said that it is 100% it has 100% sensitivity for bone infection with lower specificity. I can't say that it's raised because of bone infection. If I have any other of infection, it will be the same. The white blood cells, the C-reactive protein, the procalcitonin, be higher for bone infection and soft tissue infection. Imaging, X-rays need massive destruction of bone, late onset of manifestation with lower sensitivity and specificity. MRI, sensitive with good uh, anatomical differentiation, but it can't differentiate, especially in the commonly used technique between acute osteomyelitis and acute charcoal. This is the problem. 
The second thing is that the shark itself, it may be associated with ulcer, it may be superimposed with infection. So we are in a vicious circle. Nuclear medicine imaging, as Dr. Wagi said. Isotope scanning, good localization of bone. Uh, 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 it provides there is infection or proof there is infection, but I can't uh, say it is soft tissue or bone. Using the white blood cells labeling techniques also help some extent combined better localization. Now the positron emission and the single positron emission CT using used to improve uh, to provide the uh, proof for infection and for localization. But the question always for its availability and its cost effectiveness with higher sensitivity with high sensitivity and specificity. The gold standard remain is the bone biopsy. Not soft tissue biopsy, but bone biopsy. Histopathology, showing bone erosions, bone marrow edema, necrosis, presence of inflammatory cells. And this is from the histopathological point of view. And for the other point, we send them to uh, microbiological studies, culture and uh, culture sensitivity test to tell us uh, the future antibiotic uh, which we should use. Using superficial swab, which is a common practice, it is totally not reliable, not recommended, with um, only 38% correlation to the bacteria found in a true deep bone biopsy. Percutaneous biopsy can be done, but with precaution, as I should go through non-infected skin away from the original lesion, with 25% false negative results. There is normal negative biopsy, but there is infection when compared with a true deep uh, biopsy. Aspiration is less accurate than the percutaneous biopsy with uh, the 33% uh, uh, accuracy. So the most accurate in our eyes that it is the open biopsy during the debridement surgery. And here come the question, where should we do our debridement surgery? In outpatient clinic, in operative theater. From orthopedic management, we have to differentiate two things. There is soft tissue infection. The underlying bone is, is still not infected. Or the infection is already reached the underlying bone. And it starts from cortex to the medulla. Not like the hematogenous osteomyelitis, which we see in the children, which start from the medulla to the cortex, as it is hematogenous spread. No, it is invaded, the bacteria invade the bone from outside to inside. Diabetic foot infection, it may be chronic, related to chronic situation, chronic ulcer with neuropathic uh, problem, with chronic uh, peripheral uh, disease, uh, arterial disease or it may be in acute form, which named diabetic foot attack, and it should be differentiated from acute critical ischemia or acute sharp foot neuropathy. And both the last both conditions may lead to the first condition as a complication. I have the patient now and I decided to operate. Before the operation, I have to assess the patient preoperatively regarding his foot, ulcer, site. It's very important. In the ulcer, which should be managed by orthopedic person, or orthopedic surgeon, usually it is in a weight-bearing plantar area or lateral border or medial border. It should be weight-bearing area or underlying deformed bone. The ulcers which are shown by Dr. Muhammad Hassan and Dr. Wala, all as we note, I don't know if you know this, all are dorsal, on, on dorsal surface. When I see ulcer in dorsal surface, there is something wrong. It's mostly vascular. It is mostly vascular. Plantar, it is mostly mechanical. The size, the zips, the possible etiology, if there is deformity with uh, underlying muscle imbalance, this all should be assessed. Bone to bone, uh, probe to bone test uh, uh, is one sign. Presence of infection and its extension 
if there is ulcer, I try to squeeze the soft tissue from the leg downward. If I find the collection in the leg, don't underestimate the underlying infection. You see ulcer one by one centimeter with the whole plantar surface necrotized or the bone or the infection is spread to the dorsum and from the dorsum is spread along the tendon sheath to the leg and they may end in catastrophe, major amputation. It is recommended to photograph the ulcer for follow-up. Second, I have to assess the whole limb regarding presence of necrotizing fasciitis and the presence of deformity, tight Achilles tendon, which is predisposed to forefoot ulceration and the midfoot breakage leading to midfoot ulcer. All, this are, all those are caused by tight Achilles tendon. And lastly, vascular assessment, it is mandatory and shouldn't be missed. The systemic signs, those red flags, which mean severe infection, like hyper or hypothermia, tachycardia, tachypnea, and uh, CO2 retention, high C-reactive protein level, all those require early surgical management. Don't waste the time by giving antibiotics. Other complications regard, like retinopathies, nephropathies, cardiac related complication affect the uh, pre anesthesiologist uh, pre anesthesia uh, pre uh, operative anesthesia uh, assessment affect the doses for antibiotics and give me idea about how is this blood sugar controlled the aim of surgery is to er eradicate the infection allow adequate soft tissue coverage by plastic surgeon stabilizing the foot to prevent further to allow healing of uh, wounds and to prevent further ulceration and recurrence of infection, restore mechanical balance of the muscle to prevent recurrence of ulceration and infection. Effective debridement, it should include red zone, which is central necrotic, and the ampere zone, which is a vascular fibrotic, which uh, um, uh, uh, harbor the infection, and part from the green zone, which is a normal tissue edge. For digital infection, in proximal or middle phalanx, usually um, this articulation of proximal IP joint is e uh, adequate, but for uh, proximal infection like uh, proximal phalanx or uh, metatarsal head, ray amputation is more useful, with a special consideration in the first and fifth to keep the insertion of tibialis anterior and pronus brevis to prevent secondary deformity and secondary ulceration. Hind foot osteomyelitis affecting the joints, distal tibia, calcaneus. Staged debridement and diffusion may be helped with assessment of circular external uh, fixator to obtain a clean, plantigrade, stable foot. If there is calcaneal uh, infection, initial debridement with offloading using casts, using cam walker, and a calcaneectomy, either partial or subtotal, Achilles tendon reconstruction, to prevent overpressure on the heel. For midfoot osteomyelitis, using XM fixator to stabilize such feet will prevent uh, reulceration and removing of protruding bone also is mandatory. During surgery, don't forget to have biopsy, stabilizing the foot after initial debridement with cast with K wires to allow wound healing. A negative pressure wound therapy is, should be considered. Antibiotic loaded implants, we only use it in bone defects till the definitive fixation and time of grafting, bone graft, as there is no sufficient uh, proof in literature supporting such material, such expensive material. Post-operative care start empirical antibiotic. Antibiotic change according to microbiological tests. Regular wound care, refreshing edges, break the biofilm by scratching the floor. Second look, the brightening after 48 hours is, uh, should be considered. Vascular assessment, plastic surgery if needed. Planning for a second stage, definitive stabilization, uh, like with XM fixator, should be considered. The outcome, I can't tell you 
whether antibiotic alone or surgery. There is little evidence, but in acute diabetic feet attack in age more than 60 years old with higher C-reactive protein, with peripheral artery disease, carry bad prognosis. So, so surgery, I think, is better. Prophylactic surgeries should be considered like foot stabilization for secondary deformity, muscle transfer to restore balance, and adequate offloading, exostectomy, recent trend to revascularize foot um, uh, using uh, proximal tibial uh, cortical trans uh, transverse distraction will improve the vascularity as we see here. There is a transfer of one cortex leading to improve the vascular state from this stage to the other stage. But at the end, the diagnosis is not an easy. Eradication of infection is mandatory. Prevention of secondary ulceration help to prevent um, major uh, amputation. Amputation is still an option, don't forget. Thank you.